Hello, good morning, and welcome to another Campsys tutorial. Here we're going to be going over some Speedmaster functions, different ways you can set up the faders, um, and in some cases the buttons to tap uh, or to control the speed. So we're going to um, go to Load Show. In our Demos folder, we're going to load the Chauvet Demo Show. We're going to go to an empty page, page four, and I'm going to set up um, some lights up here in the visualizer to kind of show us our movement. I'm going to zoom them in a little bit, and we're going to store them here to a playback. Um, I'm going to call this Mavs, and I forgot to tilt them out. Because if we ran a circle like this, we would only get a figure eight. We wouldn't get a real circle. So let's tilt these out a little bit. And we're going to hold shift and hit record. And we're going to record merge it into here. So now we have that set up. We're going to make uh, an effect now. Please use the group effects. It's very cool. But for now, we're going to use the regular ones so you can follow along. So this is a big, crazy effect that's kind of like looking like we're at the Bellagio Hotel. But we're going to change this down to 15%. And then for the speed, we're going to put it quite fast. We're going to put it at 0.5 seconds. In real life, you probably would never put it at 5.5 seconds, but we're going to. And this is because the speed master that we're going to uh, make will never go faster than this uh, 0.5 seconds. The, the top of the fader is going to be the fastest um, value, or the, the value we have in here. It's not going to go any faster than that. So we want it to go pretty fast. So this is going to be what we're going we're gonna to write. We're going to store that to an uh, empty exec tile. Um, in here, we're just going to navigate to an empty um, exec screen. We're going to set the grid size, do, 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 and then we're going to store it here. We're going to call it Mavs Circle. Cool. And then we will just come up to our programmer and we're going to edit the direction. So we'll make a little symmetrical circle that looks nice. So we will do that, maybe change the size a little bit. And then we're going to record that over to here. So now we got these two things. We're going to real quickly just set them to solo. If you don't know how to do this, check out some videos on the exec page. Um, and now we're going to run the effect. So now we're running it from here. Pretty nice. Uh, let's make our Speedmaster. So let's make sure nothing's in the programmer. We're going to hit record and go to an empty playback. We're going to double tap that. We're going to go to options. Or oh, you can also triple tap the S button or the playback uh, little window button here. <clears throat> and we're going to go to the function. And in here, we're going to set the uh, QStack as a Speedmaster. Yes. Group ID. We're going to set this to 7 because... Here, the group Maverick MK2 spots is group seven. If we wanted this Speedmaster to control the speed of all of these groups, we would just record a new group. And let's say we're going to call this all movers. And then this thing we're going to set to 40. So now it's going to control the speed of all movers. And the group attributes we want to set to position. If you, for whatever reason, wanted to do some weird stuff and control the pan and the tilt speed separately, you could do that. Um, by default, it's going to be set to all, so it will control the speed of any effect in uh, that's that's running on that group. But uh, we're going to set this to position, and uh, we're ready to go. But look, it won't start. It won't go. It won't activate. It's because the Speedmasters in Campsys will not observe the fader activate stack and the fader release stack. I suspect it's because it's like a safety feature or like a kind of like a, like just, you know, just so you don't accidentally <clears throat> run your Speedmaster. I don't know. Anyway, we got to hit the go button to start it up. Uh, the other way that I like to use is to make sure that your fader releases stack um, on your buttons is set to no. And that way you can just tap the bottom button and then it will be activated forever. 
Cool. So there, now you can see the Speedmaster is working. And if we switched effects here, the Speedmaster will still control it because the Speedmaster is going to work, it's going to control uh, uh, the pan tilt speed of any uh, light that's located in this group. And there's no way around that. There's no way to exclude certain cues to not observe the Speedmaster. It's just the way they've set it up. Um, people think maybe you can use the um, master effects level or the audio rate divisor uh, inhibit, but I'll show you what those do um, here in a minute. So that's our Speedmaster. So we've made it, it's amazing. It will never, the fader uh, at the top will never be higher than, what is it, than, than this uh, time that we've entered here in the speed. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, that's one way. The other way, it's not really a speed master, but it's a way to control the speed with a fader, is to, I'm gonna go ahead and um, copy this effect over to this fader. Um, so the way we can do it is we can set the fader to control the speed of any effect that's running on this particular playback. So the way we do that is we triple click on the S or on the little window here, and we go to fader controls effect speed. I'm gonna make sure that that's on or set to yes. Uh, and just for good measure, let's take the fader controls HTTP values and put that at no when we're setting things up like this, uh, just so, uh, you know, it's not, it's not in there. It's just good practice. But if you did have dimmer values in that fader and you wanted to control dimmer values, you could make sure you set that to yes. So anyway, now this fader is uh, controlling the speed of the effect on that playback. But when we uh, bring the fader all the way down, we'll see it releases the um, playback. So how do we get the function to behave like our Speedmaster? Speaking of which, we're gonna label that real quick. So how do we get this behavior so that when we bring the speed all the way down, the effect just freezes instead of releasing the stack. Well, that's gonna be fader release the stack set to no. So now the next time we run this, when we bring this, the fader all the way down, we get a frozen effect, um, a speed of zero basically. And you can use this to store positions, which is quite cool uh, through a little trick uh, that I won't show you in here, but you can look it up. Uh, so um, those are the different ways you can kind of set up your your faders um, to be, you know, controlling speed. Uh, the last way I'm going to show you is using the global rate master that's going to be under setup, crossfade master function um, under playback. It's set by default to the manual crossfade master. We're going to change it to the global rate master. And now um, this fader, the crossfader, and only the crossfader can be set to either like divide or multiply the speed. So this, we can still sort of set the speed here, but this will like multiply it or divide it, if that makes any sense. And the original value is going to be 100% here, more or less when we have it at 50% on the fader, so right in the middle. It's a little hard to find that if you're trying to whip it really quick uh, during a, a show, but that's the global rate master. So if I wanted this cue to follow the global rate master, I would just leave it the way it is. If I didn't want this cue to follow the global rate master, I would go into advanced and masters effect level. I would put that to no. And now this master, this global rate master will not change the speed of it. Um, cool. So that's um, how you would exclude it from following the global rate master. If uh, another another thing that we can do over in um, the sort of crossfade zone over here is to set the crossfade button function to tap uh, to time, global tap to time. And that way, if we tap this, we can see the effect running faster and faster. If we tap real slow, then we could see it on uh, running slow. So it's actually changing the time. We can see GT, our man GT right here, telling us the um, global time, I guess. 
uh, or global tempo, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, so the way we can exclude this playback from uh, observing this uh, global tap to time is by uh, triple clicking and going over to the audio tab. I know it's weird, the audio tab. Uh, yeah. And going to this last um, field here, the rate divisor, and changing this to inhibit. So I don't know. It has to do with tap tempo and these things, and it's why it's under audio. But now if I tap this, it will not change the tempo or the rate or the time or whatever it is, the speed. <laughs> Uh, I wish uh, there was a little part in the manual that would break all these things down for us. So um, those are the different ways you can use the faders to control um, your speeds, uh, whether it's a speed master, whether the, the playback um, fader is uh, assigned to control the effect speed, or whether you're using the global rate master. They all have their advantages and their disadvantages. Um, uh, the last thing I want to show you real quick is that you can set like different buttons um, to be like tap times. Uh, another um, in the crossfade uh, button function, you can set it to tap to time selected. So if I had another effect, uh, let's say I had uh, this effect over here, I could select uh, this using the S button and then tap the time and then come over to here and then tap the time over here. So depending on what S button I had selected, I'd be tapping um, the tempo to that to that playback. So that's a cool way to kind of divide it up if you don't want the it, it to like tap your global time. If you kind of maybe had your dimmer effects and your um, you know color effects on different um, playbacks, you could you could uh, tap them differently. Um, the other way to kind of do that um, is to use in the, where is it? It's somewhere in here. Under playback and, and your setup, go down here to tap to time buttons. So you can set a couple different button combinations to tap to time. Um, some of these might, in my experience, conflict with the actual controls, which is kind of dumb and kind of weird, but it's cool that they're there. Um, for example, like the go button, uh, like you can just tap the go button. If that's what you set it to. I don't know why it's not working, but, um, or the S button, that's a good one because that one actually works. Look, that one, that one works. The problem is that if I try to go to this next, uh, if, I, if, if I try to grab another uh, playback, it's gonna tell me in this thing, tap. Uh, that's what you're doing. So press shift plus S to select. So now we have to hold shift every time we wanna change, uh, which is kind of a good, I like that, that's cool. But like, for example, on the mini wing, I've tried like, uh, S and go and like literally it just goes the it just keeps go it just goes it, 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 it taps but it also goes so it's it's a weird thing but maybe you can get it to work uh, the S plus flash is a good option um, and then so those those are the ways you can do it if you're on like a mini wing and you don't have a crossfader um, let me show you a real cool way since I made this video very quickly is you can go over to, well, first you need to set the, um, the crossfader uh, button function to either tap to time selected or global tap to time. I'm gonna hit global tap to time. And then on this playback, I'm gonna make sure that that, uh, that audio tab is not set to inhibit. So we'll just say that's normal. So now uh, on the mini wing, you only have the play buttons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just assign a macro uh, to one of those play buttons. So the way I've done it, uh, maybe there's a fancier way to do it, but I'm literally just gonna hit start macro. I'm gonna tap this button and then I'm gonna go end macro. And then I'm gonna assign macro to this button here. So now whenever I tap this button, it's going to tap this button, which is kind of cool. So that's a good way, like if you don't have the uh, crossfader, to kind of still get some of those tap uh, tempo buttons for your show. So I hope you liked the video. Um, enjoy some more videos and maybe, you know, drink some water and take a little nap. Um, be good to yourself. Okay, namaste.